Welcome guys to Money and Banana's Learning and Playing Channel. Today I'm going to do Money and Banana's Learning Channel. Well, today I'm going to read my weird school fast facts, explorers, presidents, and toilets. But this is going to be actually part four. So stay tuned for one, two, and three. And also I'm not sure if I'm going to do more, but just stay tuned for all of my videos. And also it is by Dan Goodman and the pictures, the his illustrator, it is by Jim Powley. So, I left on page 121, and I left it right here. So, let's start. Lincoln, Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, one of the most famous speeches in history, was considered a failure by Lincoln himself when he made it. In those days, speeches could last for hours. In fact, Edward Everett. The speaker, just before Lincoln, droned on for two hours. Lincoln's speech was so short, about two minutes, that it was over before many people even knew he had begun. The photographers didn't even have time to set up their cameras. That's why there's no photograph of Lincoln's of Lincoln delivering the Gettysburg Address. You may know that President Lincoln was assassinated just five days after the Civil War ended. But you probably don't know that he also was, that he also, that he was also, sorry, that he was also shot two years earlier. In August 1864, Lincoln was riding a horse by himself when a shot rang out. It didn't hit the president, but the bullet went right through his hat. The president asked his guards to keep the story quiet. He didn't want to worry his wife, Mary. The Union Army didn't have enough men to fight the war, so Congress started to draft soldiers. Any man between the ages of 20 and 45 had to register. The weird thing was, sorry, the weird thing was you could buy your, your way out of the army by paying $300. That wasn't fair. You probably think that the soldiers in the Civil War were all men. In fact, hundreds of women on both sides pretended to be men so they could join the army. Some of them did it for adventure, but many did it for the money. Union soldiers got paid about $13 a month. That's close to double what a woman could make at the time. The airplane hadn't been invented during the Civil War, but both Union Army and the Confederate Army had used hot air balloons to spot enemy soldiers and coordinate troop movements. They also had subs. Sub sandwiches? Yum! No, Arlo. Substitute teachers? No, submarines. The Union Army had a paddle-powered submarine called the Alligator. They thought they would use it to attack ships. But the alligator ca got caught in bad weather and sank before it, either, it ever saw come back. It's still below the ocean somewhere. Nobody knows where. It's a mystery. Ooh. A few months after the alligator sank, the Confederates launched a submarine of their own, the H.O. Hunley. It was more success successful. It sank the USS Housatonic off the coast of Charleston, making it the first submarine ever to sink an enemy ship. The only problem is that not long... Sorry... Yeah, but not long after the H.L. Hunley also sank, and all eight crewmen drowned. 
Hunley also sank, and all eight crewmen drowned. During the war, Southerners were proud of the sacrifices they made. They invited each other to starvation parties. Do you know what was served at a starvation party? Nothing, no food. So starvation parties had the perfect name. Paul Revere's grandson fought and died in the Battle of Gettysburg on July two, eighteen sixty-three. He was wounded by a shell fragment. They. Pierced his lung, and he died two days later. Baseball was invented before the Civil War, but many Union and Com- Confederate soldiers played the game for the first time while they were serving in the army. When the war was over, they came home and brought the game of baseball with them. And that's how it spread across the country. About two hundred sixty-five. Thousand men died in the Civil War. That's more than the number of deaths in World War One, World War Two, and the Korean War, and the Vietnam War combined. Many of the soldiers were killed by bullets or cannon fire. But do you know what killed more of them than anything else? The seas. Medical care was very primitive in the 1860s, and battlefields became breeding grounds for mumps, chickenpox, measles, and infections. A million Union soldiers got malaria, and epidemics were common. These are not things we should joke about. Well, obviously, Andrea said that so. You're not supposed to joke about that, so just be very careful. Okay, well, our next chapter is chapter ten, and it is called the World Wars. Okay, World War One. At the beginning of the twentieth century, Europe was basically two large families: the Allies, the British. Empire, France, and Russia were in one family. The Central Powers, Germany, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Turkey, were another family. Then, on June twenty-eighth, nineteen fourteen, Archduke Franz Ferdinand. The heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne was assassinated by a Serbian nationalist. Austria and Hungary declared war on Serbia. Russia, Russia was ally to Serbia. Germany declared war on Russia and its ally France. Great Britain declared war on Germany. Wait a minute! What does that have to do with America? Well, the United States tried to stay out of the war, but in 1915, Germany began to attack and sink American ships in the Atlantic Ocean. President Woodrow Wilson asked Congress to declare war on Germany. And the next thing anybody knew, the whole world was at war. Arlo. Maybe you can dig up some weird fast facts about World War, World War One. Well, this in the picture it says this is President Woodrow Wilson. Right here, he's sitting on a chair. Hope you can see it. Oops. There. Okay. Way ahead of you, Andrea. Here they are. Worms helped us win the war. No kidding. Soldiers collected glow worms in yards to help them see at night. The worms gave off enough light to read and write letters, but not so much as to attract enemy fire. Garden slugs also helped us win the war. When slugs detect poisonous mustard gas, they crawl up to protect themselves. Whenever they happened. Sorry. Whenever that happened, soldiers knew to put on their gas masks quickly. Pigeons helped us win the war. 
They were used to carry small capsules with messages, maps, photos, and even tiny cameras to the front lines and back. About a hundred thousand homing pigeons fought in World War One. One pigeon named Cher Amy saved five hundred American soldiers by delivering a vital message from the soldiers who had been cut off behind enemy lines. He was shot and blinded in one eye, and he lost a leg. But army doctors saved his life and gave him a wooden leg. He was awarded a medal for bravery. Frankfurt is a city in Germany, but Americans were so angry at Germany that during the war they changed the name of Frankfurters to Liberty Sausage. Sauerkraut became Liberty Cabbage. Dax sons. Became Liberty Dogs, and the Statue of Liberty became well. She just stayed the way she was all. She always was. If it hadn't been for World War One, we may have never had plastic surgery. Wow! So many soldiers came home from that war with their faces messed up from combat. That. A doctor named Harold Gillies developed techniques to repair their injuries. He became known as the father of modern plastic surgery. The youngest soldier in the war was a twelve-year-old British boy named Sidney Lewis. He lied about his age and joined the army. Sidney was one of two hundred fifty thousand boys who fought in the war. On Christmas Day, nineteen fourteen, both sides agreed to a ceasefire near Ypres. Yeah, I think it's Ypres, something like that, Belgium. During the truce, some German and British troops played a game of soccer against each other in the middle of the two armies. The area. Called no man's land. When the game was over, everybody went back to shooting at each other again. Germany won the game, but lost the war. Finally, World War One ended in 1918, at the eleventh hour on the eleventh day of the eleventh month. Weird. World War Two. Just about twenty years after World War One ended. The world exploded into another war, even more bloody than the last one. This time, the cost was primarily one man, man, Adolf Hitler, who became the leader of Germany in 1933 and decided that Germany would should rule the world. Japan and Italy joined him in 1940. England fought back, and after the United States was attacked at Pearl Harbor at In Hawaii, America joined the British and entered the war. It lasted until 1945, when we dropped atomic bombs on Japan. I'm sure Allo had some weird fast facts about World War Two that he'd like to share. Well, this looks like this picture is sh、uh, showing us Adolf Hitler, and this is how he looks like. Looks like in real life. Not sure if he's dead or alive, but I don't know. Okay, I sure do. Here's the best one. Adolf Hitler's nephew, William Hitler, served in the U.S. Navy during the war. That's not a joke. He was even wounded in battle and won the Purple Heart. You can look it up if you don't believe me. Can you imagine? Going through life in America with the name Hitler, I guess that's why William changed his name to William Stuart Houston after the war was over. He became a businessman in New York and died in 1987. Well, I guess the nephew of Adolf Hitler is already dead, so maybe he's dead also. I'm not sure. On December seventh, nineteen forty-one. The day America was attacked at Pearl Harbor, the secret 
service realized they didn't have a car with bulletproof windows to protect President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Legend has it. A Secret Service agent remembered that the notorious gangster Al Capone had a bulletproof car, and it had been confiscated when he when he was arrested in 1931. The car still worked, so the president rode in Al Capone's car on his way to make his famous Pearl Harbor speech. An hour later, Congress declared war on Japan. Okay, are you ready for this? During World War Two, British soldiers were only given three sheets of toilet paper a day. Wow. Okay, so it shows this picture that it says President Roosevelt delivering his famous Pearl Harbor speech. Wow. Okay. Three sheets. That's it. In American soldiers got twenty-two sheets. Arlo, I thought you were going to wait until chap- chapter thirteen to talk about toilet stuff. I couldn't resist. Nobody is sure who really invented the hamburger, but some historians say it was named after the city of Hamburg, Germany, during the war. Some Americans say Liberty Steaks instead of hamburger. Yes, Germany has a Frankfurt and a Hamburg. I wonder if there's a city in France ca- called French fries. Huh? Wow. I wonder if they changed the name of German Shepherds to Liberty Dogs. They didn't. In fact, a German Shepherd mix named Chips was a hero dog during World War Two, when Italian. Soldiers started shooting at him and his human handler. Chips attacked them, biting and barking until they surrendered. Surrendered. Chips was wounded, and he was awarded a silver star and a purple heart. Wow! Even though radar technology had improved since the last World War, the United States Army still used pigeons in World War Two. A special cage and parachute were developed to drop pigeons from airplanes to is isolated troops. Thousands of pigeons were dropped over France, and French people used them to send back information about German troop movements. When U.S. troops stormed the beaches of Normandy, France, France on June six, nineteen forty-four, D-Day, the mission. Was so secret that the Allies communicated only through pigeons. One bird named Gustav flew more than one hundred fifty miles from Normandy to England to deliver the news. But the most famous pigeon of the of the war was G.I. Joe. On October eighteenth, nineteen forty-three, the plan was to bomb the German-occupied ta- town of Calvi, Vecchia, Vecchia in Italy. But then the Germans retreated from the town, and British troops moved in just before the bomb being was about to begin. The British couldn't cancel the attack by radio. Radio, with time running out, G.I. Joe. Was sent with the message to cancel the bombing. He、uh, flew twenty miles in twenty minutes and arrived just as bombers were about to take off. He saved about a thousand lives. Wow! It must have been easy to spot airplanes sitting on the ground and to bomb them, right? That's why the army decided to disguise the Lockheed Burbank. Aircraft plants in California. They hired artists from nearby film studios, such as Disney, to make the plant look like an ordinary California suburb from above. Airfields were painted green and lined with plants to make them look like alfalfa fields. The main factory was covered with a painted canvas to blend in with the. Surrounding 
grass. Okay, so I'm going to show you this picture over here. Let me put it more over here. So it says, shows the picture, and it says, G.I. Joe with PDSA Dick and Metal for Velour. Wow. Okay. Finally, fake trees were put up with spray-painted chicken feathers for leaves. Do you know how some captured soldiers escaped from German prison camps? They used the game Monopoly. It's true. The Red Cross sent packages to prisoners, and one of the things that could be included were board games. So special Monopoly boxes were made that contained items to help the prisoners escape. Real money was hidden within the Monopoly money. Okay, and it says right here, and it shows a picture right here, and it says, let me put it right. Lockheed Brookbank Aircraft Planet, and this looks like it's in California. It just said it right now in the story, right there. Okay. A metal file was hidden within the board. A small compass was hidden in a plate piece. Maps of the prison and its location were hidden inside the hotel pieces. That is cool. Native Americans haven't been treated very well in America, but they have fought bravely for it. Thousands of them joined the military to fight in World War I, even though Native Americans were not all granted citizens. citizenship until six years after the war was over. And during World War II, a group of Navajo devised a code using their native language that made it impossible possible sorry that made it possible to send and receive secret messages they were called code talkers the japanese were never able to break their code when the war ended some japanese soldiers were hiding in the jungles of the Phil philippines they did they didn't know the war was over one of them hiro onoda didn't surrender or leave his poet until 1974 that was almost 30 years after the war was over. Russia and Japan have never signed an official peace, peace treaty that, sorry, with each other to end World War II. Both countries are still disputing which owns the Kuril Islands. Let's hope they don't start a world, a war over it. I don't want to see a World War III. Just imagine, like, a World War One, a World War Two. I wasn't even born. I was born in 2008, November 4th. And um, actually, wow, if this happens, I would see that World War Three. My first one out of the three ones. Okay, our next chapter is chapter 11, and it is called Weird Facts. Facts about the precedents. Ooh, I want to read this. Okay. Arlo, let's take turns sharing weird facts about the presidents. Okay, I go first. By the time he became president, George, sorry, I moved the camera. George Washington had only one real tooth left in his mouth. His false teeth were made from hippopotamus, walrus, and elephant ivory, and cow, elk, and human teeth. In 1807, the explorer Seabull and Pike sent Thomas Jefferson, two grizzly bear cubs. They lived in a cage on the White House lawn. At James, sorry, at James Madison's second inaugural ball, his wife Do Dolly served a special treat: ice cream. Most people had never tasted it before. The first lady's favorite flavor was oyster. Yuck. Gross. Madison was the smallest president, by the way. He was only about 5 feet 4 inches tall and weighed less than a 100 pounds. What a shrimp! During the Revolutionary War, James Monroe, Monroe was wounded at the Battle of Trenton. He carried a bullet in his shoulder for the rest of his life. He died on the 4th of July, just like John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, but five years later. John Quincy Adams used to go swimming in the Potomac River naked. One time, someone stole his clothes while Adams was 
swimming. He had to ask a boy to go to the White House and get him something to wear. Oh, I think I remember where I saw it. I'm not sure, but I saw it somewhere. For his inauguration party, twenty thousand citizens stormed the White House to greet Andrew Jackson. Things got out of control, so he sneaked out of a window and went to a hotel. The people wouldn't leave the White House, so tubs of punch were put out of, on the front lawn. When the partygoers, partygoers. When outside to drink, the White House staff locked the doors and windows so the people couldn't come back. According to legend, the word "OK" was invented when Mar- Martin Van Buren was running for re-election in 1840. He was from Old Kinder Hook, New York, and his nickname was Old Kinder Hook. While he was campaigning for president, people shortened it to. Okay. William Henry Harrison's Harrison's inaugural address was eight thousand four hundred forty-five words long. That's longer than a My Weird School book. It took Harrison about two hours to read it, and he did it on a cold, wet day with no coat or hat. And do you know what happened to him months later? Harrison died of pneumonia. So he had the longest speech and the shortest, the shortest term of any president. Sachari Taylor was the second president to die in office. He celebrated the Fourth of July in eighteen fifty at the Washington Monument. It was a hot day, and Taylor cooled off with buttermilk and cherries that were prob that were probably contaminated with bacteria. He got sick and died five days later. John Tyler, John Tyler had more children than any other president. Fifteen. His last child was born when he was seventy years old. Oh my God! How come he's seventy, and his last child was born at seventy years old? That is too old. Like when he, when the child is twenty, it's gonna be like ninety, and maybe the dad was in. We already died, baby. I don't know. Wow, my mom had me at like at thirty-two years old, I think. Abraham Lincoln used to store his mail, his bank book, and important papers in his stove pipe hat. I guess they didn't have briefcases in those days. Ulysses S. Grant was once pulled over for speeding in Washington D.C., and he didn't even have a car. The police officer took away Grant's house and carriage, and the president had to walk the rest of the way home to the White House. He paid a twenty-dollar speeding ticket. Rutherford B. Hayes was the first president to have a telephone in the White House. Alexander Graham Bell then ventured the telephone and installed it himself. Do you want to know what the president's num- phone number was? It was one. Wow. Oh my God! One, that sounds really funny and weird, actually. James C. Garfield didn't think people should get appointed to to important posts in the government just because they knew the president. One man was angry when Garfield refused to give him a job, so he shot the president. Garfield died eleven weeks later, but it wasn't the bullet that killed him. The operations to remove the bullet with dirty instruments led to blood poisoning that really killed the president. Chester A. Arthur, Arthur, sorry, was nicknamed Elegant Arthur. In the press, because he liked nice clothes, Arthur owned eighty pairs of pants. That's a lot of pants. By the way, do you know how why golfers always carry two pairs of pants? They might get a hole in one. That's a joke. Benjamin Harrison was so formal that the White House staff secretly called him the Human Iceberg. He. Was also the first president to have electricity in the White House. First Lady Caroline La- Lavinia Harrison was afraid to touch the light switches, so she never turned them on. William William McKinley 
was the first person to ride in this new invention called the automobile. But it wasn't much fun for McKinley. He got the riot in an ambulance after he was shot and rushed to the hospital. Teddy Roosevelt went on a bear hunt in 1902, but there was one problem: there was no bears. His guide finally found an old bear and tied it to a tree so Roosevelt would, could shot could shoot it. But the president refused. A store owner in Brooklyn, New York, heard the story and asked his wife to create a stuffed bear. He put it in his store window with a sign that read "Teddy's Bear," and that's how the teddy bear was born. William Taft was the largest president ever. He weighed three hundred thirty-two pounds. He was so big a custom-made tub was built for, just for Taft. It was big enough for a regular, for four regular-sized men. That is, if. Four regular sized men took a bath together. Well, guys, I am going to stop here. Ooh, we still have a, a little bit actually, guys. So I'm going to stop in 158, and this is actually part four. Remember, I think I'm just going to finish this in part five, and then I'm done with the book. And stay tuned for also um part one, part two, and part three. And also, if you want to watch this video, you can also watch it in part five. Okay. Well, remember, I'm sitting on 158. Okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. Remember to stay tuned for my next video of my weird school fast facts, explorers, presidents, and toilets by Dan Goodman. Pictures by Jim Pelley. That's the illustrator. Remember. Well, I hope you like it. I hope you like the facts about U.S. history. Okay. Bye, everybody. Stay tuned for my next videos, and also watch the last part of this book if you want to read all of the book. Bye.